Hello everybody, hope you're well. My name's Adam and I'm from the Mystery Builders YouTube channel. I'm working today with a Professional Builder magazine and their YouTube channel in conjunction with Warmflow and we're going to talk about everything to do with uh, air source heat pumps. For, up to the insulation, is it compatible with uh, this house, which is my house? Uh, insulation, going to go through everything and clear up a few misconceptions about it and um, hopefully see if, it's, uh, see if it's a viable option for me here. Hello, I'm Neil from Warmflow Engineering. I'm National Sales Manager for Renewables in the UK. I'm just on site uh, on the edge of Birmingham with Adam from AKF Builders just to look at his refurb project for his own house to look at air source heat pump and uh, whether it's a viable option uh, instead of gas boilers. Thanks for coming today, mate. Uh, just to give a quick background on the actual house itself. It's obviously an end terrace, as you can see. Yes. I've put a um, extension on the side of it. It's not massive, it's, it goes at less than two metres. Right, But okay. the idea is that we're extending every room rather than adding rooms. Yep. So the rooms in there are going to be quite big, they're going to be quite big to heat. Yep. And one of the main reasons why I've asked you here today <coughs> is the, um, because I'm a builder, we do this kind of thing day in, day out for other customers. Right, uh, okay. What's going on with energy costs and that sort of thing and sustainability? Yep. I get asked all the time about air source heat pumps. Right, okay. And if I'm completely honest, I haven't really got a lot to say to them. I need to know more about them so I can try and give them more information and try yep. and hopefully go down that route. For again, sustainability, keep the energy costs down, that sort of thing. Right. So to that effect, in sort of layman's terms, if you wouldn't mind, uh, an air source heat pump, how exactly does it work? So with an air source heat pump, it uses the air as the fuel, to make sense. So right. within the unit itself, there is a refrigerant, which boils at a really low temperature, and the air causes the refrigerant to boil, which creates friction through a compressor. That is transferred through a heat exchanger, which is then transferred into the system. Right. So your fuel, in essence, is the air, so gotcha. and how an air source heat pump works is the colder the air, technically the less efficient the heat pump, the warmer the air, the more efficient, but we don't use the heat pump necessarily in the summer for heating. So the efficiency costs balance out over the year. So you have a high energy cost at the start of the year, it tailors off in the summer, and then it builds up again towards the winter. Right. Um, key is insulation, especially on a, a refurb project like this, and ideally underfloor heating possibly right. downstairs and radiators upstairs. So right. it all is key on the property um, to whether it's suitable or not, because if it's not suitable, you end up with massive electric bills. Gotcha. So that's the key. Right, so that's interesting. <coughs> so you'd recommend underfloor heating? Yes, definitely under, underfloor with uh, air source heat pump. Ah, right, okay. So it's on all the time, constantly. So right. you've got constant flow. With a heat pump, you don't want peaks and troughs with it coming on, going off, coming on, going off. You want a steady, constant flow. All oh, right, okay, because so, there might be like a misconception out there then, that uh, underfloor heating is one big thing to heat, therefore yeah. be less efficient with the, the heat pump, but you're yeah. saying? It's more efficient because it's a lower temperature, so it makes the heat pump more and more efficient. All oh, right, okay. So ideally, more underfloor you've got, the better. Right. Um, but it depends on the property. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. That is, that is interesting. And you say insulation's key? Insulation is key, floors, oh, walls, ceilings, etc., etc. Right. So in, it's to that effect then, I'm putting a lot of insulation in here. Yep. Because it's, it's, this is my house and I want it to, you know, yep. obviously. Yep. Arguments like next door or all the other houses, 100 other houses that are on this road, yep. uh, not necessarily um, as uh, insulated or can do it the way to, to what I'm doing here. Yeah. Um, would, would a heat source air pump be it, efficient for them? It would be, but what you tend to find is the heat loss is so vast, you, just the running cost right. outstrip anything that's probably already in there. With any air source, it, its insulation is key. Okay. okay. So what we would do, we'd have a set of the plans, we would size the heat pump accordingly to the heat loss kelps, right. but we would need all the information on the windows, the doors, everything, so we get the requirements right. Gotcha. So if you've got a set of plans, we can then size this heat pump for you. Right, okay. I can order yeah. enough plans. You order and enough then... plans and we just the, the more information they got the better we have to feed it into our system. Gotcha. To quote it. Okay. And they're sort of like tailor made the tailor system made. for it, the... it's bespoke to this property. Right. If it was a new build property you kind of know that it's a new build spec so we know what the insulation values are okay. straight away. So you just need as much detail as possible really. Right yeah. yeah. 
Then they also, as you can see, um, rather than the floor heating. Yes. Um, and so the floor is fully insulated. Yep. Um, 75 mil PIR throughout the entire ground floor. Right. Okay. Um, the extension is 100 mil Massville cavity. Yes. Um, so that's all right. Uh, with this style of house, the only real heat loss that I've got is the party wall between us and the neighbours. Right. And there's, there's not a fat lot I can do there. I can't bring it out in order to insulate it because um, I'm going to lose too much space and the staircase won't fit and all that sort of stuff. Yep. But apart from that, all the ceiling voids, all the, um, uh, the voids within the studs are all going to be fully insulated. All the walls are going to be vapour barriered. Yep. So I'm presuming or I'm hoping that that will be enough to uh, to meet the criteria, yeah, basically. Yeah. And you're having um, underfloor with a what a flow screen on here. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So one thing to consider is manifold location. So I'm presuming we're going to need some kind of almost like a plant room, basically, you, you, an area dedicated to all the all the stuff. You do. You need a small plant room because you've got a cylinder, and with ours we have a buffer vessel. Right. And you'll have your underfloor manifold as well. So there'll be there's a little bit of kit to get in there. So oh, right. Okay. Under the stairs cupboard or a small utility or larder unit, something like that. Right. Yeah. So, Excellent. Well, yeah. I we have got a utility. Right. Um, okay. That we've built. So should I take you through yeah, there yeah, and we'll have a look? Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Okay. So this is the little utility area that yep. was sectioned off from the rest of the house. This used to be where the stairs were actually going right. up. Um, yeah. So I'm hoping that this will be an ideal area for you uh, to, uh, well, would everything fit in here? Would yeah, right? so what, what I would suggest is the buffer vessel there, then your cylinder, and your underfloor heating manifold there. Okay. And then you could either box that in um, with cupboards, because the cylinder will only be sort of 600 out, the time right. we get all the pipe work. Okay. Be fine. We need then to get a flow and return from here to the outdoor unit, which maximum of 10 metres, which we can presume the outdoor unit is going out there or out there. Well, so yes, we'll, well, have yeah, yeah, we'll have a look at that later, yeah, but yeah. We're, we're definitely less than 10 metres yeah. to, um, from here to, to the garden. Yeah, Maybe yeah. the end of the garden, actually, so yeah. so should be, be all right. There'll that. be two pipes and there'll be a, a conduit for electrics as well. Right. So, Kind of a perfect plant room, really. Gotcha. Perfect. Okay. And that, yeah. that, that 10 metres, is that like a hard and fast rule? Ideally, the, the closer the better. We prefer 10 metres. You can sort of stretch it to 12 if it's on the same level. So we, right. we say 10 metres. You covered them. Okay. No issue on heat loss. It will need to be insulated as well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the closer the better, really. Right, yeah. Okay. Which is always difficult when it's a retrofit. Oh, right. If it was a new build, they'd normally have the outdoor unit straight through into the plant room area, and away you go. So right. it just makes it more efficient, really. Oh, then, so it, it will all fit. That'd be fine. <clears throat> You've got a drain there. there as well, which is perfect for your uh, discharge and your cylinders. Right. Yeah, so normally your underfloor would come out through the doorway and right. away. One thing to consider is wireless controls or wired. So if right. it's wired, you've got to get wires back from each room to here. Okay. If it's wireless, it's, it's less it. of a problem. So. Right. And all, that, all that's compatible with this system as yeah, well? Yeah. It's all apps yeah, on yeah. phones, all that sort of thing? Yes, yeah, so our heat pump has an app on it. Right. And obviously the underfloor, you can have an app for that as well. So okay. you have two apps side by side. If you want um, to put apps upstairs, you can do link to your underfloor so we can do the radiators as well through oh, right. the same app as well. So. All right, okay. <clears throat> got you. Yeah, that's, that's all achievable. So, first and foremost, yep. let me apologise for the state of the garden. No, it's all right, no problem, it's a building site. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like someone's landed here, doesn't it? But yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it literally is a building site, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah so sorry for that. So, um, the location of the actual pump itself then, yep. is this, would this be all right? Yeah, so location-wise, if we looked at there, um, you want 500 from the corner, 500 this side, 400 at the back and then 1500 in front. Gotcha. Just, that's, that's, just for airflow. Gotcha. That's clear space all, all clear around, space around it. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So you can't put bins or anything in front no, of it. No. Because no. the, the whole idea is you're moving volume as a, of air through it so it circulates. If you have less that space, it circulates on itself. You've already taken the energy out of the air. Right. So then they don't work and you get, get errors. Gotcha. So okay. they do come on rubber feet as well. So you could fit it on gravel whatever you're going to do, slabs, slope it a bit with a drain in the middle, whatever you want to do really. All right, okay. So the flow and returns would go literally in we'll a go, straight line. We'll go straight through. Yeah, if you wanted to move it under the window, that's fine because our units are less than a metre, so it'd be fine under the window. Right. Noise wise, it's yes. A big question, big question. If you think of a gas boiler, 
Yeah. The noise you get from a flu, it's nowhere near as loud as that. Oh, really? Ma on our 20 kilowatt, the maximum is 54 decibels. Oh, right, okay. So we talk at around 56 decibels. Right. So not noisy, but it's an air, air flow noise. So they're not on full speed all the time. They ramp up and ramp down. Right. So um, you wouldn't even notice. You could sit out here, you wouldn't even notice it was running. Gotcha. So, oh, right. Um, Sorry, I said before, it's 1,500 in front, 400 at the back. So if you wanted to fence it off, you could do. All oh, right, okay. Make a bit of an area. Got you. All oh, right, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't realize yeah. that they were that quiet. Yeah. I and mean, then that's a big consideration with people. Yeah. Especially terrace houses. I mean, next door is obviously, it's just yeah, there. Yeah. The back door yeah. is there. So that's with some consideration for yeah. them as well. All oh, right, okay, that's yeah. interesting. So in terms of where this garden is, um, Locate in terms of which way it's pointing and the sunshine yep. and whatnot. There's a big house there that blocks a lot of sun. Yeah. Um, in the winter, it, it gets hardly any round yep. here at all. Would that be all right? It'd be fine. It doesn't it doesn't really make any difference because it, it's the air and the fan is moving the volume of air, so it doesn't really make any difference on the temperature of air as such. All oh, right. Okay. Um, north, whether it's north or south facing, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. So you you don't normally say it must be on a south facing wall. It, it doesn't really matter. It's, the location is key for direct pipe work all right so if you didn't want it here you could have it down the side bring your pipe work in and across so. gotcha it's technically closer but yeah it, more, it more just across, depends what you want to do here. here and obviously you've got to think about you probably want somewhere for your wheelie bin so do you make a bit of a storage area yeah. maybe and incorporate yeah. that into it yeah yeah so our units are anthracite as well so they look quite well against the cream all right okay cream backdrop as well all right so, and it is a roll color so if you had anthracite windows it would match it'll match that as well the same so excellent you have to keep the front of them clear, I presume. When you say put bins, you can't put bins right yeah, in front you, of Yeah, you won't fit, so you want 1,500 clear space in front. Oh, right, because gotcha. Yeah. Right, but yeah. you could fence it off, make gotcha, a bit yeah, of an area yeah. if need be. Yeah. So, got you. Um, it just for airflow, the volume of air moving through them, that's all. Excellent, got you. And that obviously needs power to it. Yes. What sort of size cable are we talking? So, um, depending on the run, the electrician obviously will size a cable. Right. We, we will supply, when we size the heat pump, we'll give a uh, ampage cable right. that's needed and we'll also supply a document with all the wires so all the wires come back to the unit but we supply a document because some are voltage some are volt free right so we supply all that okay. as well so and we would then speak to the electrician and say this is what you need and he would say right can i do this can i do that but because it's in the plant room you just put a duct straight through straight through and away it goes and there you go straight forward excellent normally you would have sort of two ducts one for voltage one for low voltage so they don't mix so you don't get different signals. Right, so okay. It's straightforward. Excellent. Nice one. Right, Neil, so this is the loft. Yep. Uh, it's, I was going to say it's completed. It's semi-completed. It seems a bit of a dumping ground whilst all the work was going on. Um, it's heavily insulated, uh, up, up to spec as it would be, building regulations, that sort of thing. Vapor barriers, the lot. Right. Okay. Um, but it's essentially one big open room. Yeah. So, what sort of size radiator do you think a normal conventional radiator, or is there something about the radiator that needs to change regarding the heat source? Normally, you would size this up for a gas boiler or an oil boiler. The radiators have a higher flow temperature. With right. an air source, the flow temperature is a lot lower. So, you would just need to get the radiator size, room size for um, the heat loss for a. Um, Essels heat pump. Right. So in essence, the radiator will be bigger because the flow temperature is not as high. So wherever you're getting your radiators from, whatever merchant, get give them the room sizes, yeah. insulation, they will then size it radiated for an air source heat pump. Right. And basically on the radiator chart, the manufacturers will have different flow temperatures for different appliances. Okay. So an air source radiator will be bigger than a um, gas or an oil boiler yeah. because the flow temperature is a lot lower. Gotcha. So in some cases you may end up with two radiators right. rather than one big one. So okay. it just depends on preference. With it being quite a big room you may have one on one side and one on the other just to even it up. It all just depends on what's going in the room really. Gotcha. But it's perfectly doable. Yeah, yeah, no so problem. We are, yeah. So, as I say, it's a loft so we're, we're two floors up from yeah. where the, all the, the stuff is down there yeah. and there's four radiators on the second floor, first yeah. floor, beg your pardon. And that's all, this is all yeah, doable. So, so when we size the heat pump, we'll look at the whole fabric of the building. Okay. We'll come up with an output for the heat pump. We'll size the heat pump and cylinder, and then you or your plumber will then 
size the radiators accordingly. Gotcha. Depending on style, if you want designer ones, if you want aluminium ones, aluminium ones are good for heat pumps, but you are kind of restricted on what's available on the market. Tail rails, you can have tail rails again, probably with a dual element. So you've right. got electric element in the summer. Um, but yeah, that's fine, no problem. I believe you've you received the quote. Yes, thank you very through. much. Yes. So we've done a heat loss calculation on the property, taking into considering all the uh, insulation values, your underfloor and your radiators. So the quote was, that is our uh, quote. Um, we've come out with a 20 kilowatt heat pump. Right, okay. With a 240 litre cylinder. And with our pack, we supply everything you need to install it. Um, you just need pipe and fittings. Right, yeah. And electrics. So okay. with that price, that is the list price. If you then take that to your merchants, they will price it for you, and then we'll place the order when you're ready, really. Okay, okay. So, in terms of pipes, is it, is it uh, copper, plastic, so either or, or? From the heat pump to the cylinder and buffer, it's 28 mil copper minimum. Right. You can use plastic, but it's normally 32 mil. Okay. Um, due to flow rates and uh, internal diameters. Ideally, you want 15 mil to every radiator. Right. And a 22 mil flow and return circuit. Got you. For, for, it's all about flow rates. All right, okay. So, um, but if you, we, we'll speak to your plumber, we'll speak to your electrician, and we'll we'll work alongside you um, till it's ready to commission. We'll actually come and commission it as well for you. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very so, much. No in, in terms of a, a twenty kilowatt, is that standard size? You reckon? Or is yeah, it yeah. Slightly bigger. So slightly... it's actually the twin the twin coil fan. So all oh, right, okay. Um, it's our biggest unit. It's twin it's twin coil fan. Um, so it still sit outside where we discussed on the first visit. Okay. Um, but it's just yeah because of the heat loss of the property. Yeah. It's our biggest unit. So although right. we say twenty kilowatt, it won't be at twenty kilowatt all the time. Right. It just depends on the heating load. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's the size of the unit there. And that's oh, right. outside. Okay. So we still fit in the location we discussed before. Right. No Got problem. You. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're quite mm. quite good looking. Really. Yeah, yeah. So it's <laughs> yeah. anthracite. So yeah. It will match windows if they're anthracite and downpipes if they're anthracite as well. So. All right, lovely. So it'll look quite good on the patio. Excellent. Yeah, but Beautiful. you can have that brochure as well. Lovely, thank you very yeah. much. Okay. I appreciate no that. Problem. Thank you very much. Nice one, thank no you. No problem at all. Thank you for your time. No problem. Thank you. And uh, we'll be in touch. Lovely, yes. Anything you look need. forward to. Right. So a couple of the main points I took from Neil's visit um, and they're questions that keep cropping up when customers ask me and I really wanted to get some clarification on it was that um, the first and foremost the underfloor heating it's actually recommended uh, I thought it would be go the other way it will be such um, a ground floor underfloor heating would be too much for a um, air source heat pump to, to do but no they're saying by all means have it which is great because that's where a lot of people are going down that road now for, um, for their new builds or their, their extensions, that sort of thing. Another thing is how quiet they are, 54 decibels. That, that's, that's almost a whisper, that is really quite interesting. I thought it would be a lot louder than that, and of course, terrace houses like this, it's gonna be quite, it's, there's no way it won't be close to the neighbor's back door, that sort of thing, or a bedroom window. So there's always that consideration to make. But that's, uh, no, that's great. Um, another thing is how, Quite stylish they are. They're really actually quite good looking. They're not that's like anthracite grey, and they'll blend into any garden. Um, again, I thought there would be this big lump of a machine out in the garden, noisy, whirring around all the time. It's just that's a complete misconception. It's not like that at all. And then another thing as well was the radiators. Um, you do need bigger radiators for it. Which again, which I, I didn't know. Um, just the way it's all heated, it's all heated differently. So that's another consideration to make, but by all means, it's you can have more than one in one room upstairs or something, or it's just one of those things you've got to think about, especially as a builder advising customers. But um, no, I, I, thought it was, I thought it was great, and it's, it's cleared up a few things, a few misconceptions in my head, and it, it, it does seem like a great sustainable answer, um, an alternative uh, to gas, so I'm, I'm, I'm really happy, very pleased.